Good evening and welcome to the Board of Select meeting. It is June 15th, 7 p.m. And uh, we welcome you all joining us on the conference call, Zoom. And keeping with the agenda, uh, Mr. Cassidy, do you have a report for us, an update on the Corona community uh, update, please? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I will be brief. I realize you have a very robust agenda this evening. Uh, no new cases, so we are still at 56 total COVID cases in Holliston since this began, with 51 individuals having recovered, two COVID-related deaths. That leaves us with three active cases currently. I am working with department heads with regards to our plans for uh, some sort of a phased reopening of municipal buildings. We're still waiting for barrier devices to come in and be installed. So before we can start reopening to limited numbers of the public, we need to make sure that those safeguards are in place, as well as the finalizing the protocols with regards to keeping our employees safe and uh, continue to work with the town clerk and the uh, town moderator with regards to plans for the uh, town election and uh, we will wait and uh, once we get through the the local election we will uh, look to, to work with you with regards to uh, the date that you choose for the annual town meeting and uh, so that we can finalize those logistics uh, and make sure that we keep everybody safe in whatever modified format we choose to uh, avail ourselves with regards to modifications that the executive orders from the state would allow with regards to um, whether or not we're going to reduce the quorum, um, but those final details will come in, in future weeks once we get through the local election first. Great. Thank you. That's all I have right now. All right. Mrs. Hine. Well, I think then you answered one of my questions. Um, the maximum number of people that you feel could fit into the high school auditorium given the, the town meeting guidelines that came out from the state. We are still uh, looking at multiple venues, okay. so we, we do not need to be locked into the okay. high school, uh, which does pose some specific hazards or challenges, I should say, with regards to uh, being able to clean and sanitize after its use. So okay. we do have alternate locations in town where we have held uh, a town meeting prior. Okay. So we've got, we've got options. Okay, all right. Uh, and then um, given that libraries could open on June 8th, uh, based on state guidelines yes what does our library need to reopen so our library uh, was considering op reopening last week but the way that they can open right now it wouldn't really be much of a library experience they, okay. they wouldn't be able to go in and browse and there really wouldn't be the the tactile feel of a library so at this point the head librarian felt that it was better to continue with the curbside service yeah. let people reserve stuff uh, and drop off and touchless pick up um, and before additional restrictions were, were loosened so that they could actually have the library experience. Okay. Very similar to what a lot of the uh, faith communities in town are experiencing. They, they haven't reopened because with all the restrictions with regards to no greeting time, no food, no child care, no singing, singing they yeah. just didn't feel that that would be <coughs> church. Okay. So. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. John. Uh, Chief, I just wanted to find out um, with respect, we're now three months into this exercise. Um, yes. And as we envision the reopening schedule, um, how is Holliston comparing to other communities in this regard? Are we pacing along, or do we find ourselves in a good stead? Do we have any issues? I would that say that we, us? we we are in really good shape. Uh, there are communities that have already reopened. Uh, some really didn't even end up closing. Others will open well after we do, but they've been more of a hotbed of uh, disease transmission. So I think we're, we're pretty much middle of the road. And mm -hmm. I feel very comfortable that we're not doing it too quickly and that we're being very intentional. And to our credit and to the credit of our staff, um, we've continued to offer services to our community. Inspections continue to get done. Mm -hmm. uh, licenses continue to get issued. Um, payments are being processed. So we've, uh, on very, very short notice, we were able to pivot and uh, continue to, to operate town government, but with a different model. Uh, with regard to employees coming back full-time or back to our facilities, are they being offered any kind of training 
um, electronic training, for example, on how to maintain a clean, safe work environment? Everyone will get the exact same um, regime with regards to their responsibility personally with regards to their own health as well as their workspace and then what the expectation is of what they can uh, expect that we as the employer would provide. How are they getting that? That will be electronic. So an online training course. Okay, great. Thank you, Mr. Chim. And uh, I just wanted to uh, take this opportunity to thank you, uh, uh, Mike, for all that you have done for the community. These last few months have been really uh, tough on all of us, but I have a feeling that, that they've been the toughest on you as being the director of emergency management for our town. And, and uh, you've done a superlative job with uh, connect connectivity with other uh, department heads and uh, with especially Chief Stone, who's also done a phenomenal job um, and uh, trying to keep our safety officers safe um, is a high priority and it's not easy with the way they have to deal with the public every single day, several times a day, different people. Um, and so that brings their families at risk. Um, and uh, so we want to thank all of you um, who help us in, with safety in our town and over the last few months what you've all been through. Uh, it's 24-7 in addition to that. Uh, you and Chief Stone had to keep your departments running 24-7 to put out fires uh, or, or uh, to have uh, investigative work done uh, with, with, the, with Police Stone, I mean uh, Chief Stone. And uh, so there's a lot of work that goes on um, that has to go on in conjunction with this pandemic. and. Uh, uh, we can't thank you enough for all that you've done. Thank you and to I the board you know for the, the confidence that you placed in me by uh, declaring the state of emergency and allowing me the opportunity to coordinate our response. And we all feel this way that uh, uh, we really chose the right person uh, to handle this for our town and our community. And uh, again, uh, hats off to you and we can't thank you enough. Great. Thank you very much. Warrants, Mrs. High. Sure, tonight we have a warrant for $3,397,488.61. Of that, the town payroll is $173,590.40, uh, and the school payroll is $1,396,682.25. Mr. Cronin, do we have a second? You have a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Public comment, Tina. I have no public comment other than to read uh, the 2019-2020 year in review as prepared by uh, John Cronin. Thank reflecting you. Reflecting the um, history of events as documented in our meeting minutes. So we'll start in June uh, and move through till today. And this um, is all the work of the select board for the past year. Um, and we thought it'd be nice to do an update uh, for the public um, because so much goes on and we know not, not everyone can watch our meetings every week and also uh, so we will read it in its entirety tonight and then it'll be on the town website and uh, John will be working with Holliston Reporter to do an article to go with this. Sure. Go ahead. So uh, in the month of June the board reorganized and changed the name from Board of Selectmen to Select Board. Uh, the town took control of 9 Green Street and replaced the roof at 1750 Washington Street. June also saw the completed department head salary model discussed, uh, as well as the uh, discussion on the trash and recycling program rollout. July brought uh, the beginning of phase one of the MVP planning grant and the implementation of the walking school bus program. In August, uh, the town evaluated the conditions of four dams. The Holliston Police Department presented the motorcycle concept for their force. McMahon Associates uh, came in to offer an optimized light solution for downtown. Uh, Marshall Street Solar Project bid closed with 14 respondents. August was a busy month. We had the luau at the Senior Center. 
Uh, and on August 26th, the library roof system repair was completed and we began a review of the HCAT cable license negotiation. In September, we received the uh, Municipal Vulnerability or MVP program designation and we received a, a green community grant for $216,000 the third year in a row. September 12th saw the board select Soul Systems as the vendor to produce a solar array at Marshall Street, followed by the town septic system problem being identified. Uh, September 23rd, we discussed capital requests with the school committee for the fall town meeting. And on September 30th, we appointed both George Larini uh, as new Holliston Police Department Lieutenant and Todd Hagen as new Holliston Police Department Sergeant. In August, the facilities manager cons position concept was presented for fall town meeting consideration. Uh, and October 15th saw the triple E virus uh, cancel the haunted trail walk for the community farm. Later in October, uh, the board toured Thistledew Farm and sponsors were seeking uh, restriction, an agricultural restriction on the property to preserve farmland. We also applied for a $6,000 Safe Roots to School grant and the board voted to uh, support the DPW and infrastructure studies at the fall town meeting. They were articles 8, 10, and 11. And then the month ended with fall town meeting on October 28th. In November, we posted the facility manager position. We also posted an RFP or request for proposals for 9 Green Street for an environmental assessment. The board evaluated $50,000 uh, that, that was earmarked to fund the sustainability coordinator position. On November 12th, the town technology director provided an update on cybersecurity and we announced the humanitarian award nominees, as well as the board that date discussing possible, a possible new CFO assistant town administrator position. Later that month on the 18th, the humanitarian award ceremony was conducted and a meta grant was received to fund the solar project consultant, as well as McMahon delivering um, follow-up for the plan to optimize downtown traffic. The month of November ended with the tax classification hearing. In December, Colonial Power presented an update for, ele for an electricity aggregation contract and an opt-in program to provide funds towards a sustainability coordinator position, and the board formed a facility manager screening committee. On December 16th, 2019, Holliston turned 295 years old. And on that date, the board notified the school, um, was notified uh, that the school SOI statement of interest from the 2019 application had not been approved by the state. On December 23rd, the board approved $24,000 for optimized signalization of the downtown lights. The new year started on January 13th for the select board with the board approving the financial policy in preparation for a bond rate rating application. January 21st saw the board receive funds from Sherburn to pay the new sustainability coordinator, Matt Zedek's position. The board began interviews for the facility manager for which we had 16 applicants and a marijuana cultivator vendor was in to discuss expansion into a medicinal dispensary. The board also awarded a contract to Lord Associates to perform an environmental assessment on 9 Green Street and the board began its FY21 budget reviews. The month ended on the 27th for the board with a review uh, from myself showing $21,000 in savings to date on the new waste recycling program that began the 1st of July 2019. On February 3rd, the board received 92000 we received news rather of a $92,122 grant for the Upper Charles Trail Depot Trail Improvement. February 10th, 2020, the town received $100,000 from the MVP Action Grant Phase 2. The board received presentation from the library about possible uh, acquisition of a budding property and Mr. Ritter announced his, uh, his retirement effective on July 12th, 2020. February 19th, 2020, the board hires a new facilities manager, Mr. James Keast, and on February 26th, a debt model prepared by the town treasurer was discussed. In March, the board interviews Paradigm Associates, uh, the firm eventually chosen to aid in the new TA, so town administrator search, and the board received a review of the town auditor for report of financial conditions. March 9th, the board receives uh, the school superintendent to discuss the new SOI statement of interest application for a new high school and the board unanimously approved its submission. On March 10th, the board received detailed report from Ch Chief Cassidy on the COVID-19 matter. 
March 16th, the board hired Paradigm Associates to conduct the search for a new town administrator. The board also approved remote participation for public meeting video conferencing in response to COVID-19 and the board approved on March 16th, 2020, a local state of emergency and charged emergency director Chief Cassidy to coordinate all town business and resource to resources to confront the COVID-19 crisis. On March 30th, the board moves uh, town election from May 19th to June 23rd, 2020, and the board voted to move town meeting from May 4th, 2020 to at that time, June 15th, 2020. The board dis votes to discuss immediate cessation of all non-essential spending and the town received a $16,500 community traffic safety grant. On April 23rd, the board hears complaints of truck traffic from Lowland Park's uh, Lowland Industrial Area residents. The board forms a governance committee with one applicant named. The board names seven residents to serve on the town administrator screening committee. On April 27th, the board discusses the financial impacts of COVID-19 with the FinCom chair. On May 4th, the board discusses public health and funding issues with Representative Dykma. On May 11th, the board extended again town meeting from June 15th to now June 20th, 2020. The board begins discussions on the 112th budget process. The board hears from school, the school committee on capital needs uh, and the school committee's wish for the select board to review the capital request policy. The board directs the town to draft a 112th budget plan. The board discusses department head salary matter with FinCom member and the board approves a letter from police chief to the Lowland Industrial Park business owners. On May 18th, the board votes to cancel the Memorial Day Parade. The board hears additional 0% budget growth presentations. The 9 Green Street update recommends uh, d demolishing the building and the town hall septic update from the health director, Mr. Moles, um, is provided and a request for proposals is issued for the fall of 2020. And finally, May 18th, the board approves notice to proceed to clean up the Woodland Street site. That brings us to our more recent meeting minutes, which some of which will uh, approve tonight. But to kind of round out the year and bring us to today, uh, the town administrator search uh, ended with three applicants being interviewed last Friday. The 112th budget was submitted and we found out today was approved by the state and our CARES Act submission was made last week for the full amount allotted to the town of Holliston. Thank you. Thank you, John, for that. Very nice we put together, John. Appreciate it. Okay. And we, as I said, we will have it on the town website as well as uh, we'll be doing an article that uh, will have some explanatives of, of the select board's work throughout the year to go with the, this uh, this reading. All right. Anything else for nope. public comment? John. I'm good, thank you. Okay. Um, I just wanted to thank Donna Muzzy, uh, who's with us, um, and she's been helping our town administrator over the last month, um, and uh, the two two of them has, have been obviously short staff, um, and with Jeff um, using up his acquired. Uh, personal time and so forth. Donna's running the office uh, um, pretty much by herself Monday through Wednesday and uh, she's been doing a great job. We've heard nothing but good things about her and uh, it pays to have experienced people working for the town so thank you Donna for that. And next uh, report of the town. Oh I'm sorry is there anyone else who would like to have a public comment from Zoom uh, conference call? Anyone at all? All right. Report of the town administrator, Jeff. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Very good. Um, I just want to give you a, a brief update uh, that uh, the uh, cleanup activity at 260 Woodland Street will commence on this Wednesday, and. Uh, thousand dollar project and um, can you well done can you repeat the amount again you were broken up it, it's approximately forty thousand dollars okay it, um, you know good works to our facilities manager for taking the lead on that uh, project uh, it, it's a complicated project uh, involves CEP and they've got all kinds of regulations they have to have in place and uh, but I think we're going to be done with that probably within the next, uh, certainly within the next two weeks. 
So that's good news. Thank you. Um, I also have a, re a report that the uh, the, the Pinecrest uh, Country Club uh, doors are imminently uh, scheduled for replacement, and uh, that should happen probably within the next week or two. So uh, that's I know a project that's been on the radar screen for a long time. Next week, you're scheduled to have a teleconference call with uh, uh, Senate President uh, Karen Spilka and uh, Representative uh, Carolyn Dykema. Um, I will be confirming that tomorrow morning. Um, and, I, uh, Representative, uh, uh, actually the Senate President's assistant, Pooja, called me today and confirmed they will be uh, on Zoom with us next Monday evening. Okay. Yeah, so that's going to be on your agenda next uh, next Monday uh, evening. Also, next Monday evening, um, you're going to get a uh, re report from the, our Department of Public Works Superintendent, Sean Reese, on the water rate um, uh, study that he has been um, working on now for the past several months. And uh, they will be followed by a water rate hearing and an update on the, uh, the status of the um, $8 million treatment plant facility great that's scheduled for next week okay okay that's all i have thank you sir any questions for the town administrator no john no sir I'm anyone good. from zoom have a question for the town administrator raise your hand okay thank you jeff you're welcome i'm we've, here we've got some board business annual appointments jeff do you well, um, your annual appointments are within your packet, and, uh, you know, I think that uh, it's probably prudent to, to make uh, for the clerk, I guess, Tina, to read through the appointments uh, as presented within your packet. I am light on the packet. Yeah, we don't have that. Yeah, it was not included in the electronic packet, Jeff. Maybe John has got... I Hold on, we're, we're I getting it. I think I, I got a cup. it. And sent it to you. Well, we're it. all set, Jeff. Got we're it. all set now. Thank you, Jeff. Okay, so just so caution, um, yeah. I know that my appointments are up first, but I mean, uh, you know, I'm only going to be serving until uh, July 10th or so. Right. So, um, you know, you can appoint me until July 10th. Okay. But other than that, everything will be routine. All right. Okay. I am making these appointments tonight. That's okay. So here we go. Uh, Jeff Ritter for <laughs> until July 13th, 2020, uh, ADA coordinator, affirmative action officer, affirmative marketing, construction officer, chief procure procurement officer, construction officer, contract compliance officer, fair housing officer, Metro West Veterans Service District director, municipal hearing officer, and town administrator. Building inspector, Chris Canny. Uh, and Robert Fogarty is the assistant building inspector. All of these are one-year terms unless stated otherwise. Chief Michael Cassidy, Community Emergency Response Coordinator, E911 Coordinator, Fire Engineer Chief, Forest Warden, Hazarded, Hazardous Waste Coordinator, MAPC Natural Hazards Mitigation Planning Team, Special Police Officer, and Director of Emergency Management. Conservation Commission Agent, Ryan Clapp. Constables, Craig Demon and James DeLuca. Council on Aging, Linda Marshall, Director. Department of Public Works Director Sean Reese, E911 Liaison and State Ethics Commission Liaison Elizabeth Greendale, E911 Liaison Halson Police Department, Chief Stone, uh, Dispatch Electronic Recyclers, Sworn Wares, Randy Bickford, Paul Garneau, uh, Louis Tejeda, Gary Keith, Isaac King, Douglas Randalls, and Salon Molina. Emergency Management, uh, Chief Cassidy, Director Paul Coffey, Randolph Catlin and the second, the third, excuse me, and Scott DeGan. Fire Engineer Arthur Moore and Mark Deliker. Gas Inspector and Plumbing Inspector Paul Elder and Joseph Zakili, the Assistant. Highway Superintendent Tom Smith. Lieutenant George Larini and Chad Thompson. Metro West Regional Collaborative Tina Hine. Metro West Regional Transit Authority Larry Jacobs. New England Emulsions Matthew Antonelli, Dominic Porcello. Christopher Dark, Richmond Mann, James Porcello, Gerald Hillard, and Joshua Tomato. Police Chief Matthew Stone, Auxiliary Police 
director, George Lurini, Michael Ah, Kevin, Co uh, excuse me, Devin Coakley, Anne DeResta, Andrew Gentile, Robert Goyan, Mark Haddad, Danny Lee, Sean McDowell, Danny Nash, Daniel Nash, excuse me, James Ray, Brian Ream, and Donovan Say. Special police officers, director, George Lurini, Michael Ah, Chief Cassidy, Craig Denman, Martha Ellis, Robert Goyan, Mark Haddad, Danny Lee, Sean McDowell, Daniel Nash, James Ray, Brian Ream, Donovan Say, Jean Sparrow, Cynthia Valvichin, and Donna Lee Walsh. Sealer of Weights and Measures, Louis Sakin, Town Council, Jay Tallerman, Town Historian, Joanne Hulbert, all one year term still, uh, Custodian of Tax Title, and West Suburban Health Group Representative and Tax Collector, Mary Boskett, Assistant Collector, Lois Sanders, Assistant Treasurer, Kristen Sturley, uh, weigher measures and surveyors of commodities, Sergeant Kenneth Belson, Officer Dave Charette, Officer Ethan Coakley, Officer, Sar uh, excuse me, I need to back up a minute, it's Sergeant Kenneth Belson, Officer Dave Charette, Officer Ethan Coakley, Sergeant Glenn Darrymple, Officer Brian Giorgio, Officer Scott Downey, Officer Felicia Philad Philadelphia, Officer Charles Grace, Officer Daniel Griffith, Sergeant Todd Hagen, Officer Timothy Haney, Lieutenant George Lurini, Officer John Loftus, Officer Andrew McGray, Detective uh, Kiara McGuire, Sergeant Jonathan Remkis, Officer John Scanlon, Lieutenant Chad Thompson, Sergeant Matthew Waugh, Officer Michael Woods, Officer Hannah Ch Chiavara, Officer Christopher Avey, Officer Alexander Holm, and Officer Ryan Parent. Wares for Covanta, Sharon Levitt, Doug Cody, Eugenia Ojeda, and Mike Prescott Jr. Wares for New England Emulsions Corporation, Christopher Dark, I believe I read that one already. Wiring Inspector, William Erickson, and Michael Perkins as the Deputy Wiring Inspe Inspector. Zoning Board of Appeals, Elizabeth Dembitzer. Affordable Housing Committee, Mary Greendale, Brian Clancy, and Warren Chamberlain. This is a three-year term. Agricultural Commission, also a three-year term. PJ Kilkelly, the remainder are three-year terms. Bonded Constables, Barry Sims, Community Farm Advisory Committee, Christine Westland, and Denise, Dennis, excuse me, Siraki. Community Preservation, Michael Pellon. Conservation Commission, Alan Rutberg. Cultural Council, Emmanuel Frangiel, Steve During. Council on Aging, Mildred Bedard and Robert Hopkins, Economic Development Committee, Christine Carousella, Golf Course Advisory Committee, Bob Smith, Historical Commission, Lee DeShoger, Carol Kasicki, I'm very sorry if I'm not getting these names correct, I'm um, doing my best, Golf Court, no, we're on the Housing Trust Fund Board of Trustees, Brian Clancy and Diana Harrington, Open Space Committee, PJ Kilkelly, Alex, Alex, uh, Alexi Carey, Smock Representative Richard Fuomi, Town Forest Committee, Michael Fowler, Trails Committee, Martha Ellis, Kenneth Hen Henderson, and Mark Connolly, Youth and Family Advisory Committee, Lynn Rahim, Zoning Board of Appeals, John J. Love the Third. And then we have five people who have responded no. Would you like me to read, who did not renew, or is that not needed tonight? Yes, why don't you read that? Lewis Hosmer will not be returning to the Council on Aging. Janet Childs will not be returning to the Affordable Housing Committee. Richard Morris will not be returning to the Cultural Council. Oksana Levchenko will not be returning to the Economic Development Committee. And Sean Fay will not be uh, returning as associate member of the Conservation Commission. And we thank them all for their service to the town. Okay. Any uh, questions, remarks, John? Um, Tina, I think when you started with Mr. Ritter, you said July 13th? Correct. Um, I think his last day is July 12th. Okay. So we don't want an extra day overlapping All in right. case we have another appointment. Okay. If there aren't any other comments, um, I'll take a motion. Motion to, to accept as read. Accept as read. The appointments for FY 2021. And as amended. As and amended. as amended. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Um, before we go <laughs> on to annual town meeting, we have our accountant with us, our town accountant, so maybe we should do reserve fund uh, year end transfers. Would you like to do that? I am fine with that. So you don't um, have to, you know, yeah. sit through everything? I appreciate that. I will tell you, these are the departmental, these are line item transfers that are going between departments. Okay. There are a bunch you will have for next week because I didn't have time to get them all written, 
that are entered within the department. Okay. So it's taken from one bucket of money to another. So the others are all within their own departments. My I think it was it was more important to get the ones that are going from different different departments, one okay. department to an entirely different department. All right. Okay. Can you pull up and speak into the mic and read them for? Sure. For the <laughs> residents back home, so they know. I can do that. First one is $1,700, which will be transferred into the Selectman's budget for your clerical line to cover the additional hours for Donna. Um, that $1,700 is going to come from the liability insurance. Okay. Okay? I don't know how you want me to just um, read them and Tina. then I'll sign them. Tina will read it and then I, I'll pass it down. Okay. We might have questions. I don't know. Motion to approve each one as they come through. So a motion. Well, to we we have to look at it, and then we'll take motions at the end. How's okay, that? Okay, sure. Okay. Any questions? Mm -hmm. uh, no, no. You can keep going, Sharon. We'll okay. do these at the end. Okay. All right. Um, we have another transfer of twenty thousand uh, dollars. This is going into that court judgment that we had for the ATB um, cases for the. Um, Son assessors for the assessors okay mm -hmm. um then that twenty thousand is going to come from motor vehicle fuels okay we have a transfer for fifteen thousand nine hundred dollars which is going into youth and family to the admin assistant line we budgeted her incorrectly i think we had her incorrect last year we didn't have her on the right step so she's been underfunded all year long. We knew this was coming. Okay. Um, the 15900 will come from the trash removal. Does the um, finance committee, are they aware of this? They know the, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yes, they've known about this one all year long. Okay. Thanks. Uh, next one will be $7,220. This is going into the Board of Health um, professional and technical line. Um, part of this is um, they have a mandate from the state that they have to value a couple of utility properties that we have here in town and there's a special company that does it and it basically it costs us two hundred two thousand dollars a piece we only have two it's gonna cost us four grand and then we also have um, a bill for the new software maintenance that we need for uh, the new system that, that Kathy got. So between the two, we're going to need to transfer in $7,220, and that will come from our workers' comp line. We've got some money left over in that. And then we have $13,000 going into street lights. That money is going to come from our liability insurance line. Um, we had over $5,000 in maintenance costs for the street lights and, um, yeah, I've, I've got one more big bill to pay for the street lights, one more, you know, June, the regular street lights are kind of small, but then we have the, well, the miscellaneous lights and then we have the big street light bill. So between the two, um, 13,000 will cover everything that we still have. I mean, right now the account is in the hole over seven thousand dollars so this covers that and gives me enough money to pay the bills that i know are coming at us okay thank you and then we have a transfer of forty four thousand four hundred eleven dollars this is going into the veterans benefits budget uh, this will also come from our liability insurance um yeah she's she's got some extra veterans this year and and we had extra expenses throughout the year that um i remember hearing about yeah that. yeah so this will make her whole and last but not least and this this is the really yicky one <laughs> 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 this is for you guys and from 
So I will ask the question first. You had, during the year, gotten $13,500 transferred into your account for 9 Green Street. I haven't seen any bills come in for that yet. Am I correct on that, um, to your knowledge? Lord Associates. Yeah. We I haven't seen a bill from them yet. So that would be a Scott Moles question. I'm just pulling up the meeting minutes because we approved... I think there was engineering and so forth, right? Okay, I, I looked, I looked in, in Munis, and I cannot see any payments because I was checking to see if they got paid from a different account, All right. and I cannot see that we have paid them. Okay. On May twenty second, the Nine Green Street Committee mo made a motion and approved thirteen thousand five hundred dollars um, to LEI for okay. that invoice. So Scott Moulds would be so he must he must back have around. Okay, that said. Once I take that transfer out of your account, uh, you guys are going to need about $44,500 okay. transferred into your professional and technical line for yeah, for uh, special counsel legal and, services and, and, and town council. and you Yeah, well, we had that Sun Edison issue. Right, you did. Yeah, so there are a couple a special counsel things in there yeah. that I saw. Yeah, but that yeah. on top of yeah. additional town council expenses, I guess. But yes. Yeah. Um, Jeff, so you might have a comment on that. <laughs> um, He's not here. <laughs> He's there. I, I He's really there. don't have a comment on it other than that uh, Sharon needs to keep on top of me to make sure that we get all the bills accounted for before the end of, uh, end of June. Yep. Je uh, Jeff, do you have a comment on why... Um, the town hall budget went over. Uh, we were just discussing because of professional fees. Maybe you can elaborate a little bit. Well, we've had a lot of litigation over the past, uh, you know, 12 months, um, and that would probably account for it. I can give you more detail later. Okay. Question. Question. Jeff, um, have you communicated the um, select board's uh, budget deficiency to date with the finance committee? No, I have not. I have. You have? Yes. Okay. The scope, in other words, right? Yep. Okay. Yep. So yep. this is this is something they were aware of. They are now. Very good. Yep. Yep. So anyway, the forty-four thousand five hundred is going to come from health insurance. Okay. To cover that. Do you need to look at that? So. This is the entire list. The ones that are highlighted in green are the ones you have in front of you. The others are the ones that I will make for, for next week, the ones that are staying within the same department. And but the green ones are the ones that we could, you are looking we at. We could approve time. everything next week, uh, correct? Um, you can i know the finance committee is is kind of looking for these because they've got to sign off on these too so i didn't think it was a bad thing if we could get this batch <laughs> yeah no it was just over that to them for tomorrow yeah um, it's, it's just that uh you know we we may have some questions um but i mean you can look at it i mean i i, I can sit for a little while if you yeah um well we have, have any questions we have a couple of Finance Committee members on uh, Zoom. So okay. we'll start with Tina with questions and then John, myself, and then I'll ask the Finance Committee if they have some questions. Yeah. So and I mean, while you're here, I think right. that's well, a good idea. Like I said, th these were the ones that were going from two totally different departments, and I figured. Yeah. No. It would be that. better to get these off, off, you know. All right. Tina, questions? If he's done and, and the others are just within departments, so I can do those next week. So the selectman's budget, um, mm -hmm. that 44500 mm -hmm. that does include the 13005 That was your clarifying question? That was my clarifying question because I... You didn't want to add that on top of it. Exactly. Okay. So, yes. Okay. That will cover everything. I want to say that was a reserve fund transfer request. It was. So you got the re yeah. you got the reserve fund transfer. When I was checking everything, I realized we hadn't paid it. So okay. you are right now in the hole. Like 
$19,000, which I had to add the 13.5 on because we haven't paid that bill yet, which is what brings us up as high as it is. And you said that the street light, mm -hmm. where is it here? It was 13,000 over. I want to say that was one of the budgets we cut for FY21. I think we did. <laughs> right. So <laughs> I was looking to see what we cut it to. And so <laughs> we'll have to be really good about it next year. And you're saying these are repair costs to some unexpected? I, there, I, I added them up, and there was over $5,000 in repair costs. Um, but well, there was a broken, uh, I'm, tr I'm trying to remember that which, but which light, but there was a line that was broken there that had to be repaired. And then the assessors for those two $2,000 assessment um, mm -hmm. costs, yeah. that was moving forward into their FY21 budget request. No, I think Kathy has to get those done in 20. Or she'll hire oh. them in 20, mm -hmm. let's put it that way. So if we don't get them, get the bill paid in 20, I'll encumber it into 21. Sure. But that, um, I guess, I'm sorry, what I meant yeah. to ask is do they repeat again in FY21? Are we in the same I position yes. we were? Uh, this is, as far as I know, this is going to be, I think it's annually. I think it's annually. I know the it's a specialized thing, and I know yeah. the, uh, one of the selectmen's meeting, one of the board board members, one of the assessory board members, was hoping within the next year or so to get some state help or something. I, it was yeah. either state help or trying to get Kathy to some specialized training, so it's something okay. she could do, okay. and we wouldn't have to lay out that kind of money. And so, last memory jog on this issue: we did not add this these two two thousand um, dollar costs into the one twelfth budget. I remember this discussion back and forth on the June July timing no, of it. So this know. is not in the FY uh, the no. 112 no. budget. Okay. Whether, whether or not Kathy has it in her you know, I don't know if she's specifically funded it or figured in twenty one she can absorb this within her budget. Okay. All right, I'm all set. Thank you. John, questions? Uh, Sharon, overall there uh, is this a typical amount of transfers in a given fiscal year in your experience? Um, it is pretty close. This, I mean, the right smack in the middle is um, our facilities manager, which unfortunately his entire budget went into salaries. So, I mean, mm -hmm. five of these transfers are just me getting it out of a salary line and covering his supplies and, and that sort of thing. So, right. there's, you know. So we're going to see that and the others next week? Yeah. Um, yeah. The reserve account, reserve fund rather, mm -hmm. has $258,000. Yes. On this model, you don't show touching that at all. You're using entirely uh, favorability from the line items that have it developed surpluses. Six of one, half a dozen It is, other. but it's worth noting yeah. that the line items have favorability. Yes, yes. Um, one of them includes the waste collection. Do I understand that mm -hmm. this year we saved $30,000? Oh, yeah. Does that include the wheel braider count, or is that just the L. Harvey? No, it's both. It's, oh, it's, it's both. under both? Mm-hmm. It's good to they know. They both get, you know, paid out of the same account, and you do, you, you did well this year. Okay. Yep. Mr. Chairman, I, I'm fine with making a yep. motion to approve these uh, transfers and clearing the deck for Sharon to come back in a week and clean up the balance of them. Okay. If you like. Do we, um, well, Ben Sparalak, the um, Finance Committee uh, liaisons on Zoom, um, I'd like to hear his thoughts. Ben? Hi, can you hear me? Yes. All right. Um, so a couple things. Um, I, I I think it's, it's it's tricky because there's a lot of information being um, being spoken, and I'd like to be able to see the backup for it, just to be able to understand uh, the nature of some of these transfers. We knew about some of them, but not all of them. Okay. Um, and um, and um, I'm speaking on like from memory. I haven't had time to research or look up certain things. Right. Um, and so I think the two things that I want to know are, first of all, I want to see the backup for what the spending is. And then the second thing is, is we need to understand if this is going to have budgetary impact, like if street lighting, for example, if this is something that we need to be aware of so we can make sure that the budget is reflective of that maintenance that needs to take place. Uh, comments, Sharon? I, yeah. Uh, if you want to email me in the morning and tell me you remember which ones we did I can send you the sheet that I gave to them um, 
which has the transfers that we just did highlighted, but you'll also see the other ones that are within the same department. If you want to e email me back in the morning and tell me which ones you want detail on before I your think meeting. I think we're, we're probably going to want to see that. details on all of them, so okay. I think it'd just be easier. I, I'll email you in the morning, but uh, if we could just get all of them, and certainly that would be great. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, we also have Vince and Murphy and Dan Alfords from the Finance Committee on. Do you have any questions for Sharon while she's here and uh, that we might be able to answer? I don't have any questions. Vin Murphy here from the Finance Committee. No, I don't have any questions. I'll wait until I see the details like Ben said and talk about it then. Okay. okay. Dan, any, any questions for Sharon? It's just... Um, so thanks for the opportunity. Uh, I mean, again, I just echo what, what Ben and, and Ben said. We'd like to, to see the information. I'm, I knew about the veterans, but um, the, uh, the the fifteen percent um, overage in, in your budget. Uh, just you know, we're going to sort of see some of the details there. I'm, I'm I'm a little surprised it's as big as it is, and we're just sort of finding out about it now. So um, as much detail and, and, and color as we can get, uh, you know, is, is going to be helpful. That's and, all. and you've got the details, Sharon? Okay, yep. good. All right, yep. Sharon, well, Sharon will get that out to your committee in the morning so you'll have it ahead of your meeting. Yes, yep. Great, appreciate yep. that, because that's a lot for them oh, yeah. to look at for to one. So if you can get it out it in the morning. Like this, yes. So and you guys and I would send it to the whole committee so that they Oh, I will, I will, I always good. do. Great. Clerk signs us. Excuse me? Uh, are you looking for something signed? I I we have a motion. Sign the form so I can then pass them along because sure. the finance committee has to sign them as well. Okay, we have a motion on the floor. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank okay. you, Sharon. So and uh, you you'll get that. Sign to the those when you sign the cover sheets. I'll get them all from Donna tomorrow. Oh, okay. You'll, okay, you'll, okay, yeah. you'll okay. get them to the finance committee so okay. they can okay. Thank do you their very job. Much. Thank you. Thank you. Don't forget those. <laughs> Annual town meeting warrants. Sharon? Yes. Sign here, right? That's just extra. So, Mark, yes. we have the uh, Rail Trail Committee Chair, Robert Wydneck, on to speak. Oh, so I don't know if do we want to go first. Well, if we want to go through order, the order of the 1 to, what is it, 28 on the warrant, or if we can yeah. let Robert jump right in. Let's and get do that. Robert, you're on the... The Zoom will go right over to Article 28. I, it's actually, I think it's Article 17. Is it Article 17? I thought you said 28. That's how many are in total, I believe. Oh, okay. So you were just given the total. It is 18. Article 18. Let's see. I have 19. There we are. Okay, go ahead, Robert. Robert Widenick, 40 Hemlock Drive, and Chair of the House and Trails Committee. Um, this is a... Um, a request for funding uh, basically since the trail is, is completed at this point it's for maintenance of the trail and so we've had costs through the years uh, mainly for uh, various equipment cutting vegetation back um, cleaning up some of the edges of the trails and putting down stone dust and maintaining our golf cart and, and other equipment as well and so um, we estimated last year this is a similar request last year of a thousand dollars and we've w gone through that and we anticipate we'll have to spend another thousand dollars on some of the equipment um i've had some equipment uh breakdowns as well as our highway department has had uh, one of their crashing mowers break down so it looks like the volunteers are going to be doing a lot more cutting this year than than they had to because of um, the timing having the uh, equipment by the highway department break down. Um, so, um, and vegetation seems to grow stronger every year. You know, they, it um, never ends for us. Um, so it's a simple request for $1,000, um, uh, not too much to it. And didn't you get about the same amount last year? Uh, yes, that is correct. The same amount we requested. I thought. Yeah. Any questions, Tina? Um, just again, th this is uh, for equipment that's broken. So replacement equipment primarily? It's used for a number of different things. Um, I have a brush cutter. It's my own personal one. Um, and I, what we wanted to do was to buy one for the town 
that we could then use on the trail. Um, but it's a, um, it's like a long hockey stick and it's like a, a string trimmer head. And then you have this brush cutter on it. And, um, and so that's one piece of equipment that we know we need now, uh, because of the vegetation that's growing on the trail. Um, but in the past, you know, it's been dealing with the golf cart and we had flat tires and maintenance on that as well. And so we have various equipment um, that has to be maintained and, and supplies. Okay. And it looks like Ken Henderson is, would like to talk. Ken? Ken, are you there? Ken Henderson? I think he has. To, does he have to press star six to uh, to get on the call? He's, he's, he was video. Nope, it says he's unmuted. They appear to be muted. Oh, we can hear you, Ken. We can hear you, Ken. They can't hear the proceeding of the meeting. Oh, well, can you hear now? No. It's interesting. Robert, you're, you can still hear? Yes, I can hear fine. Okay. For some reason, Ken's having trouble. Um, well, Chris will help him. So, um, Robert, does the highway department have a brush cutter? Uh, do you, are you allowed to use some of their things? Or? We don't actually use their brush cutter. They have a it's a tractor with this big uh, thrashing mower on it it's with a long hydraulic arm that goes down the trail and mows back the edges about three feet on either side um and so i don't think they would have anything as small as as what this you know it's a 18 inch long hedge trimmer with a hockey stick basically right so um, this is more for uh, like paths and yeah it's it's you know, use, we can raise up and cut some of the vegetation that's overhanging, yeah. as well as we have so many vines that are growing up and, and, and thorns and that sort of thing. And this hedge trimmer is really beneficial for uh, working on that type of equipment. Okay, great. Uh, any questions, Gina? No, I'm all set. Thank you. John? No questions. No questions. Oh, there's Ken. Please. Ken, did you uh, join us? How are you, Ken? No. Not able to. He's trying to. Hmm. Um, I believe it is his internet connection. Oh, it's his internet connection. Okay. All right. Well, um, do we... Uh, I don't think we need a motion, no. right? Uh, we should take a vote. You it's, want our, to take a it's vote? our article, so I'll make a motion to approve the $1,000 Estimated cost for Article 17 as shown, maintenance and repair of the Upper Charles River Trail. Okay. I second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank All you right. Much. Thank you, Robert and Ken. I knew you were there with in spirit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tina, did you want to, do you have some uh, articles that you want to talk about? Uh, I wanted to point out that 16, so Jeff, this one's for you. Article 16 and 22 appear to be duplicates. We brought it up last week. I know you had a lot of edits to make to the warrant, but I think we're going to need to come back and uh, look at, again, Article 16 and Article 22. And then Article 26 uh, can come right out. So Article 26 is... <clears throat> Where are we? That's the electric uh, aggregation revenue to fund sustainable support. Right. So um, I won't even get into the uh, text on that. We'll just uh, because it it doesn't need to be in the, in the warrant. In that the board already voted for this, already made this decision, um, and okay. so Article Twenty Six can come come out. Got it. Thank you. And, and then the um, excuse me, oh, can you go back? You said something about Article 16. Yeah, Article 16 and Article 22 have nearly identical language. And um, to the best of my ability, I read them both over and did not see how they are different. So 
either clean, we need to clean it up or we need to have um, a little more information in the comments section to better explain why we have two articles for Hoppingbrook Road and Voighton Road. Um, so I think there's more work to be done on 16 and 22. Can you look at that, Jeff, and get back to us next Monday? But because uh, they... Oh, sorry, Jeff. Go ahead. Well, I think that Article 16 is a new article. Um, article 22 is a article that was approved at a previous town meeting but was never actually um, filed with the courts. That's my understanding. But I will check with Karen on that. Okay. Yeah, and maybe it's just a matter of having the comments inserted so that the reader can follow that. Yeah, instead of having two, maybe one article, if that's possible, Jeff, let us know for next Monday, yeah. next meeting. Yes, sir. And then um, just for my own understanding, I tallied up what we have currently on the capital article, and we've gone down from what was originally there in the earlier drafts of $1.647 million we have dropped that down to 483,120 with, with the requests that are on this version, this draft of the uh, warrant. So, yeah, and that's I am, all. I, I did not actually add up that number. Um, $1.6 million is not accurate. Oh, well, uh, yeah. What's, re what's reflected in the current warrant. I'm more concerned about what is in the warrant and Article 14, the capital expenditures. I need clarification on what exactly the board wants to have in this article. Um, I've stricken out um, uh, several technology articles and the committee and field article. I've left in the Miller Field roof. Yeah. I've left in 1750 Washington Street improvements at $8,600. Yeah. I've left the center improvements at uh, $12,000 wastewater treatment plant at $54,500. That's correct. And geoperability improvements at $283,020. That's I what mean, I that's have. Um, do, is that what everybody else says? Yeah. We all concur, Jeff. Well, that's what I have. Yeah. I, I just, I'm, I am very concerned and I'm sensitive to the communication that might go on. Uh, about deleting some of these items from the capital expenditures, um, you know, article, especially for the school committee. Yeah, well, I think that uh, we've, we've definitely... Some, someone needs to communicate with them about, you know, what's going on. Oh, well, I believe we've, we have um, when, when they were with us last week, if I correct. recall, Jeff. Uh, That's correct. But um, you can I send this, you know, you can definitely... Uh, communicate uh, all of this with all these players, uh, no problem. I have done that, but I have not received a response. Okay. So I just want to make sure going to avoid some kind of a catastrophe here. <laughs> well, no, we, we, we spoke about it last week, and uh, I think okay. everybody's aware okay. of what the select board uh, is going to approve and, and recommend for town meeting in this article. Well, there may be some disagreement about that because uh, some people think that this article is sponsored by the Finance Committee and not the Select Board. Well, that's okay. We can, we can talk about it at uh, town meeting um, if anybody wants to, to uh, um, discuss it with us. We're more than happy to do that, but at the end of the day, the Select Board has to approve the articles for the warrant, and this is what we're approving. Okay, so with your... Okay, so with your approval, I'm going to remove those items from that article. Um, so, when the school committee... Forgive, forgive me. Uh, excuse me? This is Joan Shaughnessy from the school committee. Okay, you want to speak, Joan? Just, I, I have to confess that I was, I was working on our newsletter and I wasn't listening to the previous uh, sentence. Um, uh, but what I'm understanding you're saying is that, uh, Jeff, you are going to strike what from the, from the warrant? The draft warrant I received struck most of what was in our capital request, with the exception of the Miller roof. Are That's you correct. That's okay. Correct. That's our understanding. Yep, the Miller roof has been approved to, to uh, 
to uh, have in the article. The other things have been taken out. Right, and we're, so we are we are singing from the same sheet of music. Absolutely, yeah. We t we talked about it with Chair Stacy Raffi last week, and I believe Anne Louise was on the call as well. So I think I think we've all got the same info. Mark, are we still waiting yeah. for the school committee to present their capital request formally before the yes, select we, board? Okay. We're still waiting for the. So this remains a draft. This, this remains article? a draft. Okay. We're we're uh, waiting for the school committee to uh, come in so that we can um, uh, approve their capital uh, request for the article for the warrant. Forgive uh, me, Mark. Why would the select board be approving the school's capital request? Because this. The select board has a capital request policy, and we need to we need to be able to approve everything that goes in the articles for the warrant. So this is this uh, last time Stacy Raffi came in in October, and we approved all of her requests. Of course, we weren't in the pandemic at that point, so we it's basically a matter of process and procedure and transparency for the residents. Right, I thought that our agreement was that our presentation, the schools, the school department's presentation of capital was informational to the select board and not subject to their approval. Forgive me if I if well, I've misunderstood well, the, that. The, and that well, was the, change, a new change this year? No, um, it's two years old, the policy, and the select board Got a lot of feedback from residents uh, about three years ago that they wanted more transparency and that they listened to our meetings a lot more than they listened to other meetings and they wanted to well, know so everything that's in and, 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 <laughs> and they wanted to know what what's in <laughs> what's in the capital requests and uh, the town did not have a capital request policy at that time so we created one and so that means uh, we need to hear from everyone um, what their requests are and then uh, we approve the articles in the warrant and you would also need to see the finance committee because they need to know too so um, well, so we well, saw Stacy we don't approve we don't approve your budget yeah we don't approve your budget we have no authority over your budget whatsoever um, we don't get into that with you the finance committee does um, you're an elected board and so are we so we don't yeah. we don't get into your budget but we do have a capital request policy and that's for everyone including you and um, the select board needs to approve the articles in the warrant and therefore we need to know all the information and discuss it for the residents so that they may have questions at our meeting uh, concerning your request and we you know we need to do our job so that that's all that is mark yes if i understand John. correctly that uh, capital request policy was also vetted by council who upheld uh, the authority you're speaking to mr shaughnessy about yeah i don't i don't know did you hear john John Cronin's comments? I did. Okay. So, um, anyway, we're waiting, you know, uh, for the school committee because we, we only discussed last week uh, what, what wasn't going to be in there after discussion, and now we just need to kind of formalize it. And I believe you've already been to the finance committee, but, um, you know, uh, that's between you and the finance committee they're they're an elected board too so they've got to do their job I'm sure and you know and we've got to do ours okay right. right Jeff when does the uh, warrant need to be finalized and when would you like to hear from us in a formal way as soon as possible okay we would have been happy to come to this meeting and present um, so next week, would you like to hear from us next week? Sure, that would be great. Just to kind of put a stamp on it. We okay. we have and, had discussions, you know, but um, this this year being what it is, I think everybody needed a little bit more time, and 
And I'm, I mean, you've had a lot of other things going on at the school committee, so you've been pretty busy. Ah, not too much. <laughs> <laughs> so, so well, forgive it, me if my understanding was was not what you just prescribed, and and I don't mean to be a Janie come lately and mess up the work. Oh no, so problem. That's not my understanding, but it's probably because I'm not on the budget subcommittee anymore. Oh, that's um, all right. So forgive me. I did not mean to. To uh, cause consternation. Oh no, problem at all. Um, you know, the more the more questions, the better, because there's there's residents out there that were wondering. I'm sure the same thing. So, so if I can just jump in here for a second, uh, John, under Article Four, that's the compensation for elected officials. I wanted to make sure I got your directions correctly. Correct, you did. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm waiting on Article 5 for some input from Mary on the wage charts. So and, Ma um, Mary provided some feedback today on that. Um, I think she might have forwarded it on to you as well, Jeff. Well, I'm on vacation. I haven't seen it. Right, right. It'll be waiting for you when you come back. So you could look right. at it thurs so, Thursday morning, Jeff. And um, under advice of town council, um, article. Uh, under the version I hope that you have is Article 10 is the revolving fund spending limit. Uh, we need to um, identify what the spending limits are annually for these revolving, not to reauthorize the funds, but just to authorize the spending limits. So I've inserted Article 10, which I hope you have in your, your packet there. Um, under Article 13, I have updated the uh, report of the Community Preservation Committee expenditures, the revenues, and the appropriations, based on input from our town accountants. All right, Article 14, uh, obviously I'm going to have to state this uh, Friday's edition, I have a question. Um, removing uh, the School Committee Technology, School Committee Technology, uh, the Committee in Field, uh, the Dual Purpose Trackless the MT7 tractor, uh, protection system, library repairs and improvements, uh, mid-size SUV vehicle for the facilities manager, sidewalk improvements prioritization plan and water asset management plan and DPW facilities study. And then I'm going to have to update the bottom line as yep. to what that means. Absolutely. And John has a question for you, Jeff. Jeff, on Article, yes, thir on article 13, for the Community Preservation Committee, the amount shown yeah. under the reserves totals six hundred and sixty-six thousand dollars even. The appropriation shows five thousand dollars to cover administrative functions to support the committee. Should that six hundred and sixty-six thousand dollars be now six hundred and sixty-one dollars as the total? It appears um. as though it appears as though you added the five thousand as income or something positive yep. to the reserves. I think it needs to go the other way. So six hundred and sixty one thousand. So you're I think you need to make a change under appropriations where the total currently says six hundred and seventy one thousand to make it six hundred and sixty one thousand. Is that correct? Yeah, that, yeah, right. That's what I said. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I'll i I'll make that adjustment. And Mr. Chairman, if I have a minute, um, with Mr. Uh, Ritter on the line. Article 11, Jeff, still has two funds being redacted. We were asked to clean that up. It still shows as redacted for conservation fund and stabilization fund. Correct. According to our town accountant, uh, neither one of these funds uh, exist. Well, we could follow up on that. The town um, so I guess uh, moving on, I don't have, uh, I am waiting for information on Article 21 from Town Council about the reference to the law about that, and um, so I'll ho hopefully have that next week. Uh, and um, or I guess Article 26, pursuant to Tina's suggestion, is that we remove that article. Mr. Article Chairman, 26. I have a comment about that. Huh? I what? have a comment about Go that. Go ahead. Uh, Tina, the purpose behind that article was to create a loading 
or a landing spot rather for funds generated um, for energy reserves. Let me Co go ahead. Council had advised that in order to establish such a revolving fund, and I put that in air quotes, an act by the general court was required for a local option to adopt it. Yeah. That's what that uh, language represents. Uh, I just want to then direct you to a previous article, if you give me a minute to find it here, John. Sure. Could you look at Article 25? And if well, you actually, there's something going on here, Tina. Okay. Um, they're misnumbered, so you're seeing it numbered as number 25, but it's actually number 26. My apology. So uh, okay. that's what I was reading. All uh, right. Then I would. All right. So the article that remains. Uh, so if you follow Article 24, is the stormwater and land disturbance. Bylaw amendment, right? Hold on. Um, we've got a couple different versions of yeah, this. Yeah, we've got a couple we different versions. I'm looking efficient. at the one that was printed off prior to our meeting and handed to me. I'm, in, I'm so. looking at Article 24 as the stormwater mm -hmm. article. That's correct. Okay. But when you go to Article 25, what would be 25, it's also numbered Article 24. Um, I have temporary moratorium for recreational marijuana is article 24 in you addition to you have two 24s so we have two 24s okay so that's an issue so the article i'm referring to that's re that's unnecessary is the one that's called electrical aggregation revenue to fund sustainability coordinator positions and i have by that as article board. 26 i do too here you do too do you have a but that's the name of it. That one I would call out as not necessary. Well, we had asked Jeff to check with town council on that. He's got a note here. So mm -hmm. do we have an answer on that, Jeff? If, I mean, Tina's recommended not pulling it. A big pardon? Not yet. Well, okay. It is, right. it is not a one cent monthly, 0.1 cent monthly. It is a uh, one tenth of a percent, uh, sorry, one tenth of a cent for every kilowatt hour. That is the energy manager adder. That vote was taken on March 2nd by this board to approve. Um, and that was taken to the Department of Utilities uh, for their review um, and is effective. Okay. So, yep. Um, um, but the article should stand as it is, as Article 26. No, no, she's saying it should be removed. Well, you know, if. if the safest thing would be to have town council review it. Yeah, I think that was the whole intent because yeah. we're intending to use these funds for that purpose and we wanted to be overt about that. Okay. All right, so I'll send it out to town council for review. For That's Article 26. And then, Jeff, we've got to clean up. We've got two Article 24s, so there's something. Well, that's, yeah, that's a numbering issue. That's not a problem. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Anything else, Jeff? I don't think so. The last article, I think, at the moment is the petitioner article on it. Yes. Yeah. Petitioner. Mr. Chairman, if I could? Yes, John. We'd ask Mr. Ritter to have the uh, edits available um, by tonight so that we could convey this document to the Finance Committee as they had requested. They're on a calendar to um, prepare the omnibus and related votes for the upcoming town meeting on July 20th. Um, I would ask the town administrator, I know he's got some other obligations here, but uh, we need these things amended and cleaned up. And if, and if they have to remain unknown at this point, pending legal review, mark them as such. But the, the formatting of this document shouldn't take too long right. for anyone to make so that it's a functional document that the Finance Committee can start looking at. Right. So, Jeff, it, if I could direct you to do that, make the, the edits on numbering and um, uh, formatting by tomorrow and leave the areas requiring legal counsel review until you get your answers. It's imperative, however, that we share the information with the Finance Committee without delay. I really don't find this to be much I would just, I would just remind Mr. Um, 
thrown in that uh, the uh, draft of the warrant is sent out to the Finance Committee on every Friday. And um, they have a very up-to-date version of that document without, you know, some of your edits. Yeah, I understand that, Jeff, but we're, we're trying to convey to them a document that reflects the accuracy of, without typographicals and um, shows the best effort of this board as of this date. Up till now, it's been an administrative document that you've shared. So I'd kindly ask you once again to clean up the edits, finalize it, and get it back over to them with the cleaned up numbers that Ms. Hine and I have given you and the renumbering of the articles. Please. And well, he won't be in until Thursday, so. Yeah, Donna do it. It's, this is just word, word document formatting. It's not hard. Okay. All right. Anything else to be discussed about the town meeting warrant? All right. No, Next. Uh, confirming that Ms. Ms. Mazzi can make the word document changes and get it over to the finance committee. That's all I need okay. to hear. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. All right. We have uh, uh, governance committee appointments. We have Mr. Len Engel and Mr. Scott McKenney. Uh, that would like to be on the governance committee. So we have a motion. Len Engel. And Scott McKechnie. Stop. Scott McKechnie. Okay, so a motion to appoint Len Engel and Scott McKechnie to the governance committee. I, I believe. Have a second. We just need to determine the term. So oh. there were two or three terms. If you give me one second, sure. I'll mm -hmm. pull that up. That's right, there was, wasn't there? Committee of seven, I think this will bring it to a committee of five. Five now, which would give them a quorum. Correct. So they can start to make mm -hmm. decisions. I'm blind, blind here, but I'm going to say it's a one year appointment. I believe it is. Okay, so a motion to appoint uh, for one year Len Engel and Scott McKechnie to the governance committee. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Meeting? Uh, motion carries. Thank you. We have meeting minutes of June 1st. And if we can have a motion to approve, John. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We already did reserve fund transfers, town administrator appointment. Okay. Tina, do you want to discuss uh, the uh, candidates? the three candidates and any comments you have and and uh, if you've come to a decision yes so I, I prepared some comments um, thir Friday night was an impressive evening the candidates were were great um, and so I prepared the following comments uh, this past year uh, from the last election through until this very moment has brought near constant change not all of it has been good, and that's COVID-19 I'm referring to, but the vast majority of the past year has brought positive change in no particular order. Some of the highlights include those that were read previously, a new facilities manager, two new police officers joining our police force, a sustainability co uh, coordinator, the pr pride flag being displayed over town hall, new fire engine, new motorcycle for the police. Uh, these are all positive changes. Of the three incredibly strong candidates, one represents change the most to me. I am confident, excited, and proud to play a part in bringing a new town administrator to Holliston, someone who represents a goals and objectives focus to running the town of Holliston, someone who finds and encourages the passion and drive and <coughs> quality of work in our town employees, someone who knows the ins and outs of a master plan and is recognized for showing innovation and success in efforts to elevate resident voices in town decisions. Thomas Gregory showed a focus on downtown revitalization that would benefit Halston in very meaningful ways. Tom dem demonstrated a kind uh, and effective ability to govern a small town like Halston. Those who shared comments about working with Tom made it clear that he is capable and driven by doing what's right. Travis Ahern was very compelling when describing the approach he would take as a new town administrator. His ideas of planning and preparing Holliston to be in a position to explode out of the gate, so to speak, post-pandemic pandemic was uh, exciting to me to hear. His experiences through the LEAD program show that he can empower town employees for the benefit of the town. 
However, my vote for the new town administrator of the town of Holliston would be for Kate Hodges. Kate presented a resume that touched on just about every area of town government and the comments from others highlighted how effective she has been in each role she's taken on for the town of Concord. Kate's various roles in Concord evolved, involved her in areas that represent some of the most important assets in my opinion, but also goals for the town of Holliston. Kate demonstrated steady control during the interview on Friday evening and spoke clearly and effectively of her strengths, but also candidly and honestly about areas in which she will grow. What I saw from Kate's interview was her tremendous potential and passion, and this is the change I believe Holliston wants and needs. My first choice for the position of town administrator is Kate Hodges. Okay, thank you very much. And John? Um, <coughs> I, uh, I also echo a lot of what Tina was saying regarding the candidate's strengths that we saw last Friday. Um, and I couldn't help but think going through each candidate what kind of change they were going to present to the town of Holliston. I was beyond excited. Um, I spent the last weekend talking with numerous people in town about the, uh, the selection. This, this process has gathered quite a lot of interest, which I think is excellent across the board. Uh, from department heads to citizens <coughs> to all kinds of folks. I even spoke to several people on the screening committee about their experience with the candidates in the first round of interviews. Um, I found that the, um, at the end of the day, as I assess what the town needs, um, I think at the end of the day, what I really believe is necessary is financial management. It's something that is at the core of this office. It, it, it really connects uh, the function of government to every corner. Um, I find that uh, in any given day, if you're not concentrating at least half of your time on that kind of a, uh, a skill, you're, uh, you're probably not doing your job the right way. Um, I thought that uh, Mr. Gregory was a, a very compelling candidate. He had great experience. Um, his, his overall demeanor was, a, was one of very calm, assuring, and even keeled presentation. But at the same time, I thought that he had spent a, few, uh, a fair amount of time jumping around in, in positions, and I'm, I'm looking for somebody who can give us a commitment of time uh, and not worry about, you know, if we're going to be doing this again in three to whatever <coughs> years. Um, I liked Kate Hodges a lot. I thought she presented herself quite well. She had great energy. Her experience was very interesting. I loved her career arc, um, and clearly she's done quite well at the town of um, Concord. Um, I wanted to add that over the weekend I had the chance to speak with our consultant who I think might be listening tonight, Mr. Bernie Lynch, about both candidates that um, remained. I, I, I kind of sized up Mr. Ahern and Ms. Hodges as being sort of the ones that were in play in my mind. And I, it was really a 41, excuse me, 51-49 argument all weekend, going back and forth. And, and I allowed that to happen. I wanted to be free with my ideas of how it would play out. I see both candidates as having a certain void or a certain missing link. They're not, nobody's perfect. With Ms. Hodges, as Tina indicated, she expressly stated uh, the financial piece wasn't in her toolbox. I mean, she, she's done it, she understands it, and that's great, but that's not what got her where she is. She's, she's, she's a manager, she's a project director, and she's got good town administrator experience. Mr. Uh, Ahern had um, exquisite financial skills, um, some of the best you can probably imagine. He's been recruited by um, entities uh, to, to perform his work over the last several years. He's highly thought of um, by the folks he works with. Uh, the references were stellar, um, but yet um, he was never an assistant town administrator. We, we chatted about that on Friday when he came in. So talking with Bernie, I was trying to kind of, you know, think about, well, how do you fill those voids? Where do you go to get that kind of skill? Today, I took the opportunity to um, call the town managers in their respective towns. I felt it was upon me to make my own reference check. I spoke to uh, Mr. Steve Bertha up at Danvers and retired town manager uh, Chris Whalen about each candidate. And I had a very co great conversation with both gentlemen about the candidates. Um, not surprisingly, both individuals were glowing about these people. They, they really, really had an affection and a strong flair for um, what these people have for skills and what they can offer. But, you know, at the end of the day, I just came away with the sense that um, I, I, got, I got a sense of um, completeness after speaking with um, the uh, town manager in, in Danvers that Travis has, in, in his experience, worked with uh, the town manager in Danvers extensively on uh, any number of things well beyond the financial management piece that he had. So, 
filling that gap again came back. So he will, ha he will have a good understanding on day one of what to do with the town administrator's role. I'm not saying Kate wouldn't, but Kate would have to work towards the financial piece, which is different in Holliston. We don't have the kind of resources, for example, that they have in Concord. So I'm here to uh, uh, put my vote behind Travis O'Hearn. I think he'd be the right person for this job at this time, given the scope of the financial urgencies that we have in this town. And uh, I might be remiss if I didn't add that I'm also compelled by Travis's experience at the Mass Water Resources Authority. Um, I, spoke, I, I understand that he spent a fair amount of time working on water management issues, both funding and project related. And given the fact that water is one of our most precious natural resources in this town, we talk about it all the time. We, we have as a board put a lot of energy into the various types of um, public projects that we hope to get down the line. I think his skills will help us get there as well. Okay. So that's where I'm coming from. So um, I too uh, was impressed by all three candidates. Um, and I too had Thomas Gregory as the, as the number three candidate out of, out of the three. And I've had uh, uh, a lot of back and forth uh, with with the, the remaining two, Kate and Travis. And I, I did speak with Ben Sparrow before our meeting about his thoughts. And he had some good points as well. Um, and um, I've looked at a lot of the comments from the search committee um, and from uh, Bernie's company about about the, the in my mind the final two um, and I wish we were hiring a um, both of them I, I, yeah I wish we could hire <laughs> both of these two because uh, one would be a great assistant to the other and they'd make a heck of a team but that's not what we're doing. And so at the end of the day, you gotta make a decision. Um, and um, so I too came up with uh, Travis um, as, uh, as the choice, although I really uh, was impressed with Kate. Um, I think she has a lot of energy. I think she has great communication skills. I think she works well with others. I think she likes projects and she likes to get things done. She's a doer uh, and I could tell she's uh, a joy to be around. But when she said that um, the financial part is not something um, that she um, feels that she's uh, in tune with, that she depends on the town manager uh, where she is and, and others and works with them and she's aware of, of uh, finance. It's not her strong card. In this position, uh, as town administrator, you are the chief financial officer of the town. And so that's what swayed me to Travis. Um, had she had that experience um, in education um, in that field, uh, and that was the, the other thing is that Travis has the education uh, with finance, quite impressive actually. Um, so my, my feeling was that he was the stronger of the two candidates, but I can't say enough about Kate. Um, and Thomas was obviously very impressive too, all three were. Um, but at the end of the day, I, I have to uh, I have to uh, go with Travis. Um, and I think that, that uh, all three are in an, a, a really good age group that will grow with the town. Um, they have um, a, lot of, a lot more working years. 
uh, to go. They seem to, all three seem to me to have uh, uh, good positive attitudes. They seem to have uh, in a good energy threshold. I think they can handle wearing many different hats. This position as a town administrator is a hot seat. Uh, let's be honest about it. You get blamed for everything. Uh, and uh, if anything goes wrong, you're the one that's going to get the phone call. What happened? Uh, some of it's informational and others are pointing fingers. Um, and so you've got to be able to wear many hats and you've got to wear them all well. Um, and that's not easy. That's, that's not easy. And that, that takes some experience. It takes some, some, uh, some failures and, and, and it takes uh, some uh, wins. Um, you, 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 you have to be able to let things roll off your shoulders and not take it personal because otherwise you'd never make it in this position. I mean, this is a tough, this is, this is, this is a tough job, um, you know, to, to make sure that, that, you know, when you're, when you're working with people that you can handle constructive criticism and not take it personal was, is what I was trying to say. Um, and, and that's not easy, you know, this is a, this is a tough job. So at the end of the day, um, Travis was my choice. Um, Got to make a recommendation that we consider ranking the candidates as such in the event that things, you know. Absolutely. Ben, did you have out. something you wanted to say? Uh, yes, thank you. Um, I, I just, I, I wanted to say um, uh, I appreciate the uh, the words of the select board, and um, if things were slightly different, I'd be sitting at that table um, uh, having this very conversation. And um, I, I, um, I have to somewhat disagree with uh, Mr. Cronin that I don't necessarily think we are in a we we have financial needs, but I don't think they supersede some of our other needs in terms of how the town is uh, managed. And I think that. Uh, Kate was a great candidate, and I am um, uh, disappointed that um, Kate's not being supported to take on this role. I think she would have been a great town administrator, and she was uh, the person that I was hoping would be chosen by this, this board to do this job. Um, you know, I appreciate that uh, it's not my vote to take. It's not my uh, choice to make, but... Um, I just wanted to make it clear that um, I think Kate would have would be the best candidate, and um, I that's all I have to say. So thank you for listening. Okay, thank you, Ben. Anyone else from the Zoom conference call want to make a comment? You have Bernie Lynch up there, by the way. Hmm? You have Bernie Lynch on. Oh, Bernie, Bernie, any thoughts you want to say? Uh, no, I, I think that um, you know uh, this is a, a board decision and. Uh, I'm just glad that you felt that you had uh, three strong candidates. I think you, I couldn't agree more. I think you had three extremely strong candidates. And uh, the town is fortunate to be in this position where they have to make a tough decision between, uh, you know, three good candidates. Right. Uh, so, um, you know, I would just urge you to rally around whoever candidate you choose. Uh, and uh, that... Uh, and then as far as the process goes, uh, obviously this would be subject to the successful negotiation of a, an employment agreement. Uh, and uh, we always advise that you also just have language that uh, would, any additional background checks as needed. But um, the step here would be, the next step would be for you to take a vote and then um, uh, let the candidates know and begin the negotiation process. Very good. <clears throat> All right, <clears throat> I will take a motion. A uh, motion to appoint Travis O'Hearn, Town Administrator, Town of Holliston. Okay, do we have a second? I will second that motion. Um, all those in favor? Did you want to have discussion on it? Or? Uh, so this will be an interesting vote. I, I just need a, a 
clarification on procedure. <laughs> yeah, proper procedure here. Okay. I'm going to second the motion okay. uh, and stand by my choice in my vote. Okay. And Chairman? Yes. Hi, this is Jeff. Um, I would just uh, preface that motion by saying subject to successful contract negotiations. Yes. Um, if you could add that to your motion. So moved. And you second it? Yes. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Opposed. Thank She's you. She's opposed. You're opposed. Yeah. Okay. So, um, two, um, two members voted for Travis Ahern and one did not. The uh, motion carries. Um, and so now we need to go on with the process. Um, um, and I'm sure that the search committee and Bernie will... We'll, um, well, I think their job's done. Now yeah. it's time for us to engage Dan Brown and begin a dialogue. Yeah, we can, we can have town council look into background. I understand that so. Paradigm Acts is a resource going forward if we have any questions about salaries, competitive salaries and things like that. Yeah. Bernie's, Bernie's there for us. But uh, I think Mr. Ritter can tee up Dan Brown and get us engaged with Mr. Ahern and okay. start the dialogue. So, Bernie, um, we may have some questions for you. Uh, yep. and uh, and then we'll have Jeff engage with uh, town council uh, right. labor attorney to uh, right. start, start yeah, the process. As, yeah, as John was saying, if I um, in the, in the proposal I gave you, I, I'm here for you to serve as a resource and to help bridge any um, any um, you know the, the positions of the two sides as you go through this with any information I can provide. Um, uh, you know, and I've worked with Dan in the past, so I, I'm happy to work with Dan or uh, his partner, uh, and uh, obviously on behalf of the town to uh, reach an agreement. Okay, thanks. Much appreciated. I'm sure Jeff will be in touch with you and so forth. Yeah. yeah the, the other, the other just recommendation I would make is that uh, um, at some point, uh, Mark, you may want to reach out to Travis and let him know uh, the results and. Uh, I will uh, I will speak with the other candidates and let them know the argument. Absolutely, I'll call Travis tonight. Great. And you'll call Great. the other two, or do you want me to call them? I will call the other two. Very good. Right. Thank you, Bernie. All right. Much Great. appreciated. Thank you. Thank and, you. Uh, we may not speak again, but you know, <laughs> we'll. It's been great working with the town, and yes. uh, I hope you have a great. Uh, a great town administrator. Well, thank you, and uh, it's been a pleasure working with you. Thank for you very me. much. Thank you, Bernie. Great. Thank you. Okay. You. you got it. John, did you want to go through the exercise of ranking? Do you feel that's okay? Yeah. We sure. rank the candidates just in the event that something falls through. We should always have a, a process by which we look back and oh, say sure. we, we've voted on these candidates. Absolutely. Did you? Did you? Sure. Wonder? So as stated, my first choice would be Kate Hodges. Uh, my second choice would be a very close second, Travis Ahern. And my third choice would be Tom Gregory. Okay. So I'd go with Travis first. Very close second, Kate, and uh, Mr. Gregory uh, third. And that's what mine is, um, Travis first, Kate, and then Gregory. I mean, then Thomas Gregory. Okay. All right. Any other business, Mrs. Hyde? Uh, yes, there are two things that I wanted to bring up. Uh, the first is to follow up on the comment last week when we made the submission or the, the vote to submit for the full amount for the CARES Act. Yes. I spoke with um, both uh, the director of the Community Action Fund and our director of Youth and Family Services, and the board hopefully should expect a proposal from one of the two on um, uh, a request perhaps or a possible contract to receive money through the CARES Act. So again, there should be a proposal coming um, that would uh, outline a framework by which CARES Act money could be used to um, provide mortgage and rent relief. There's no guarantee that proposal's coming. The three of us are going to have a conversation probably this week to kind of flesh out some of the, the details here. But a first stab shows that there's some there's interest there and a fairly reasonable path forward. Um, what I put forward to both those directors of the 
fund and then also uh, youth and family services is that we're talking about a very small amount um, not even four percent of, of the total to meet the the anticipated needs of uh, people in the town so um, that should be coming before the board. And then the second thing that I wanted to bring up is that on Thursday, MassDOT uh, released uh, information on a funding program, Shared Streets and Spaces. So they'll be uh, meeting tomorrow with some stakeholders here in Holliston to kind of look at drafting um, some projects to put forward uh, to enter into that funding program. I will point out that there's, as to the best of the knowledge of, of those looking at this information that just released Thursday is that there's no match this is not a reimbursable grant. This is a mass DOT funding program. And so the understanding is if, if you qualify, if you're awarded it, the money comes to you and you move forward with the project. Um, so again, wanted to just put that on the radar screen. No, no decisions have been made, um, but we're gonna have a meeting tomorrow just to kind of talk about how this might apply for Holliston. Yes, John? Yeah. Okay. Um, could it fund studies? So I asked that question. I don't know exactly what you mean by studies, but I did ask the question, engineering and design are a part of the program. Um, this is such a new program that it's not entirely clear just yet. Mm. The information is still um, being Great. released. You're yeah. talking about a traffic study or a... The sidewalk and infrastructure <coughs> issues we've been discussing so far. Right, yes. Um, the, the program has some pretty specific uh, requirements and th it needs to be completed by October 9th of 2020. Um, and ideally these are projects that are completed within 15 to 30 days. This is in response to the pandemic. This is um, creating new spaces, uh, improving networks so that people can socially distance well, enjoying active, uh, transportation, active rec recreation, and also giving businesses space that they wouldn't other, otherwise have for outdoor retail, outdoor dining. And that's kind of the overall focus. Safe Fruits to School is also under this. So I can ask that question though. Yeah, that'd be yep. great to know. Mm -hmm. Great. Any other business, sir? No, sir, I'm good. Um, I have two items, did, was it, did you get them out? Yes, I did. Okay. <coughs> good Thank mark. you. I just have, John, if you could make sure that the uh, <coughs> capital request policy is on the agenda for the next meeting on Monday. John was going to make a couple of edits. Yep. And we'll approve that. And then the school committee wanted to come in for uh, to discuss capital request. So that would be another agenda item. Both of those, please. All right. If there's nothing else, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. This meeting is now over. It is um, 8.23. Nope. I'm sorry. 8.43. Sorry about that. Thank you and good night.